What's up with the Charles Big Balls coming back with another video. This video today is about being a fragrance YouTuber and is it worth it? And is that like a path you should go down? Now, if y'all want the short answer, I would say it all depends, but it's leaning towards no. Now let's just talk about the good first before I get into the negative. First off, you can reach out and meet a lot of people that are very similar to you. Like I met a lot of guys that's into fragrances that I probably would have never met if I never did this. It's rare that you bump into somebody in the real world that actually collect fragrances like you. Fragrances, when the fragrance is gonna come out, you know about the different concentrations. You already have your favorite fragrance house. You're able to compare different fragrances pick out the notes in different fragrances. Being a fragrance influencer is so niche that I really appreciate when I bump into somebody that loves it, like how I love it. Now, you can collect fragrances without being a YouTuber or a fragrance influencer. But when it comes to posting content, you are under a lot of scrutiny. But I can say if you like challenges, you like being creative, you like teaching people, you're a helper in life. Being a fragrance YouTuber is made for you. Also, if you're really shy on camera, talking in front of an audience is going to help your people skills because this is good practice. In the beginning, I really didn't know how to talk in front of the camera, but now I feel like it's really easy for me to talk to y'all. I can just imagine that this is like FaceTime and I'm telling y'all stories and teaching y'all like I would if I was talking to somebody over the phone. This is a good pathway to get you into starting your own fragrance business like I did because I recommended so many different fragrances to you guys. When I finally came out with my fragrance, it's kind of like y'all trusted me and knew that my fragrance just had to smell good because I recommended y'all so many good fragrances that smell good. So if I come out with a scent and say it smell good and I green light it, y'all are more susceptible to trust me than just somebody randomly online starting the fragrance business. Because people that don't start out as influencers that just drop fragrances, they have to give out free bottles to a lot of different people just to get their name out there. But when you're an influencer, your name is kind of like already out there. Now it's bad things too when it comes to being a fragrance influencer. There are people out here that take this way more serious than you initially think. When I came into the fragrance game, I'm just thinking they are just fragrances. They are just colognes. You put colognes on to smell good and to get compliments from women. But I realize the fragrance community is very dynamic. There are people that eat, breathe, and sleep fragrances. There are people that might not like you. There's a Reddit call od jerks i don't know if y'all familiar with that if they don't like you bro and they and they find any flaws in your content they will post you and just slander your name they just they just would you know, it can become real tricky if you're not on a good side making fragrance content is very hard extremely hard you really only have three to four different templates you can do when you're making your fragrance channel and it's, and it's really hard to stand out. You can make top 10 list of fragrances, but that becomes a little redundant because if you make a fragrance list called top 10 panty droppers and then top 10 date night and then top 10 head turners and then top 10 making love fragrances, them are all four categories of the same type of fragrances. So if you're watching one influencer, you might see the same fragrance get talked about in all four different videos and there are a couple of youtubers that only do top 10 lists and i know from experience that that list that they're coming up with is made on the spot not too much thought behind it and if you don't know better you might go to the store and pick up that fragrance that they lazily recommended you that could potentially be tens and thousands of videos if you're just reviewing each fragrance i have a playlist called before you buy which has the potential to be a very big category because there are so many fragrances. I can just drop a before you buy every single day for the rest of my life on YouTube with a different fragrance. Another thing I do is verses where you can compare three fragrances together. 
I still do um, guess that scent where I pick your favorite celebrity and I guess what fragrances they'll be wearing. You could talk about layering scents. You could talk about the history of fragrances. There's so much to talk about. But one thing I do know is that you really, really, really have to be like a fragrance nerd and really love the history of fragrances to be a fragrance reviewer. If you got like 20 fragrances and you jump in the front of the camera, trying to make money off of YouTube, you gonna run out of content after 50 videos. Now you gotta kinda think about it like this. You should be dropping a video every day. So if you got 20 cents and you review each one of them 20 cents, that's like 20 videos, you mix and you layer a couple cents, you, I, with like 20 fragrances, you really only gonna get like 50 videos and you kinda gotta think like, damn, there's 365 days out of the year, I don't have enough content. So you kinda gotta really be creative, it gets really hard. This is also very expensive. At first, you're not gonna get free fragrances like these big dudes out here. I don't even get free fragrances all like that. So going to the store, buying the new Tom Ford that might cost $350. Buying the new Creed that might cost $350. It's like you already need you a full-time job just to be a fragrance YouTuber. The investment is so crazy and it takes so long for you to make your money back. on the simple fact that you're buying each product. Now you can do something that I used to do, I, and I still kind of do this, I will buy a fragrance, review it, and just take it back. Because sometimes bills need to get paid, and I know I need to review this fragrance, but I can't part with $500 right now. The first year when you get monetized, you might be making 250. If you keep it up, the next year you'll be making 500 a month. If you do it for three years, you'll be making 750 a month. If you keep it up for four years, you'll be making like a thousand a month from YouTube. The more creative your content, the faster it go up. There's a lot. And when it comes to knowing about these fragrances, you have to know what bergamot smell like and when it comes to these fragrances you have to know about each individual note inside the fragrance and what it smell like so you kind of got to do your research you have to know what lavender smell like you have to know what iris smell like sometimes different fragrances use different quality of iris so you have to know the cheap iris to the real expensive iris you have to know about bergamot and what bergamot smell like what black currant smell like what geranium smell like you will have to know about all these oils being a fragrance influencer and a youtuber is probably one of the hardest things to do on YouTube. All right, y'all, so that was a lot of different topics. If y'all want a part two, you let me know. We can, we can get real serious and get real in detail if y'all enjoy this type of content. Y'all just let me know in the comments, all right? Becoming a fragrance YouTuber, the good, the bad, the ugly. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm out.